Okay, for starters, we have to reorganize this. They mixed up the old stuff with some of the current cases, unfortunately. Just this? No, just this, this, this. For now. You always were a crummy organizer. Hey, not so. Yes, no, it was the office staff, I swear. We had one clerk who used to file things according to legal entity. As in F for felony and T for tort? Uh, yeah, and we had another guy who used to sort things by the judge that was on the case. Are you kidding me? No. Frankie got some of it together at one point, but she stopped and then it all fell apart again. Oh, poor Cass. Never could control the help. Okay. Legal pads, file folders, labels. Uh, out on that desk, I think. Okay, if I spread out here, is that going to bother you too much? No, here's fine. Then you won't keep coming in and out for files. Right. If you have any questions... I'll ask. someplace where I can get at it sort of quickly, like right here. Clumsy. We can put all of this old stuff in storage. It won't work, Cass. Stop fighting it. You can't do this, Cass. Neither can I. Oh, yes, we can. We'll buy a couple of trans files and dump all this stuff in them. It won't go away. What the hell am I supposed to do about it? Admit it. Will you stop giving me orders? Well, at, le at the very least, can we just talk about it? I am it? sick of talking about it. Yes, there's one thing we could always do, no matter what we could talk. Yeah, we never shut up. each other we could talk which was a lot of the time Even when we didn't like each other we could talk when was that you're kidding right <laughs> don't you remember when you first hired me to impersonate cecile you really didn't like me then you were insubordinate you talked back i didn't appreciate being shot Cass. i mean it was one thing catching a chill in the fog dress in an evening dress trying to just look like the woman but you didn't warn me that i could be okay, killed it was a strange arrangement i didn't even have Admittedly. any blue, blue cross blue shield or anything but you did agree to it didn't you <sighs> And I agreed to it in theory. I did not agree to running around Mallorca like a moving target with a mantilla. You look cute in that mantilla. Did I have to tell you that? And you always said you loved Mallorca. I loved it after the fact. I especially loved it after Cecile sailed away in the sunset with her prince. Yeah, right, and left me to foot the bill for the entire escapade. Yes, but see, Cass, if you had gone to a bank like a regular person instead of Tony the... You Tuna... were always great at second-guessing me. Do you know that? My credit rating was just... It was non-existent. What? I just look around these offices, reek of success in the good life, and I just wonder where that boy, that little boy went that was dressing around his, at his crystal lake, running around trying to avoid his loan shark. I mean, did I tell you how truly awful you looked in a dress? Repeatedly, thank you. <laughs> 
Crystal had such bad taste, too. Her, her shoes never matched her bags. All right. Okay, so Crystal never quite put it together. Leave her alone. I mean, she couldn't even keep her wig on. Don't remind me. Do you remember that? Do no, I you were, remember you that? You were gliding towards Tony, and you were going like this. You were dressed in that, the most obnoxious outfit of your whole repertoire, and you were holding a glass of champagne. And Wally was over the other side of the room, frantically waving my wig at me. He was such a smart, sensitive, wonderful man. I want to be like him when I grow up. Me too. He kept trying to get me to see uh, what? how I felt, how you felt. I mean, after all, you did pawn your mother's heirloom antique cameo brooch in order to try to get me out of that mess. Yeah, I would have, too, if, if Cornbread had come in. What were you doing putting all of that money on a horse? It was all I could get. Five thousand dollars was all I could get. And it wasn't enough unless I came in really big. And, and Wallingford seemed to think that Cornbread would win. Yeah, why did he know? A lot. You just said so. At least I got you your brooch back. Yes, you did. You climbed out my oh. window on Christmas Eve and you and you came in and you and you gave it to me and you gave me a really nice kiss you and, can then, stop and then you climbed out. <laughs> did I ever thank you for that? Yeah, probably. I didn't, thank you. Gosh, this is fun. I haven't thought about this stuff in ages. Really? Well, if I did, I, I couldn't share it. Yeah. Those were, uh, times, weren't they? Oh. You had curlers in your hair, and you were giving that hound a vinegar, vinegar bath. bath. Yes. And you were crying. You never came in. Well, I couldn't. I knew it would mortify you. I never stopped you before. This is true. And I must tell you, I had four or five outstanding opening lines That's formulated, but I showed great restraint. But instead, you just call me up and apologize for being late and ask me if I would rather go out to dinner instead, and I was weak with relief. Wasn't that thoughtful of me? Yes, it was. Yeah. Called you from the phone down at the corner drugstore. Took me to the Northwoods Inn for our first real date. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. All the way home. It's uh, late. I, I should go home. Yes, it is. Hey, listen, thanks. You were really a great help. We got a lot accomplished. Oh, it's the best fun I've had since I've been back in Bay City. Nothing like a stroll down memory lane. We have a lot more than memories, Kathleen. 